Hey everybody, it's me, Angela Walters, your favorite midnight quilter. And in this episode, I'm gonna step outside of my comfort zone. My quilting comfort zone, that is. But I have decided it's time to branch out and try something new and unexpected. So I'm gonna make the Westward quilt in a color palette I wouldn't normally use. So I've pulled a couple of different fabric options. Oh, it feels weird, but I think I like it. This one features Painter's Palette Solids by Paintbrush Studios. I love the luscious way it feels and how it quilts up so beautifully. These are the only solids I sell on my website. So while the color might be outside my comfort zone, the fabric itself definitely isn't. But I've also pulled together some prints in the same general color palette. Still with those blues and a little bit of gold and a pop of that multicolor. This is so tricky because I designed these prints, so they're kind of like my children, but the solids will really show the pretty quilting. Decisions, decisions. I think I'm gonna go with the solids, but I have both kits available on my website. Just check the link in the description box below. All right, come here, my beautiful fabric. It's time to get cutting. This quilt has some smaller pieces and some big pieces. These smaller pieces are gonna make the center block. And these bigger pieces are gonna make the same block, but bigger and less put together. Kind of like me. You'll see what I mean in a second. Once I have my strips cut, I'm gonna subcut them into all the different sizes I need. I've got all my pieces, so it's time to start putting them together. I'm gonna use a stitch and flip technique to turn these strips into the block that's gonna be the focal point of my quilt. This technique is versatile and oh so easy. No going out of my comfort zone here. Chances are, if you've made a quilt or two, you know how this goes, but just in case you need a quick refresher, place a strip or square right sides together with another strip, and then draw a line from one corner to the opposite side on the back. And hey, just a public service announcement, make sure the drawn line is going the same direction it says to in the pattern. Won't quite turn out the same way if you don't. Then you can pin or not. It just depends on how much of a quilting rebel you are. I like to think I'm a bit of a rebel myself, so no pins here. Then sew directly on the drawn line. Once you have, in fact, confirmed that you've sewn on the line in the correct direction, it's time to trim. So carefully trim about a quarter inch away from the sewn line. Then it's time to press open. I guess this is the flip part of this technique. This method is tried and true and one that I've used countless times. So I'm gonna change it up a bit and try out a new ruler. Well, it's a new to me ruler, the folded corner clipper. This is gonna allow me to do the stitch and flip without drawing the lines. Sound a little crazy? I know, right? We're still gonna place the fabrics right sides together just like we did before, except instead of drawing the line, I'm gonna position the folded corner clipper ruler on the fabrics and cut along the edge. Now I can take it to my sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam along that cut edge. Then press open. The awesome part about this, no drawing and the trimming is done before I sew. It makes the whole process so much easier. Sometimes it's a good thing to go outside of our comfort zone and try some new stuff. Now that I have my technique down, I'm gonna start stitching and flipping these pieces together to make the strips that make my block. Be sure to pay attention to the pattern because it will show you how the strips go together and which direction to sew the line.
and this block is finished. But I'm going to need a little bit bigger quilt than this if I'm going to want to play around with the quilting. This is where the oversized deconstructed block comes into play. So starting with this in the center, I'm going to add the two sections on either side made with the same stitch and flip technique, just a little bit bigger strips. And once I've sewed these together, I can add the top and bottom sections, and then my quilt top is finished. I love it when a quilt comes together quickly. I love the big areas that I'm going to have lots of fun quilting with, and it's pretty amazing that it all comes together with the stitch and flip technique. I have the backing all picked out. This is actually one of the prints from my Stroll Fabric Collection, and I selected the perfect thread colors. So all that's left to do is to get this quilt sandwich basted so I can start dreaming up all the quilting designs. I've got my quilt sandwich basted and ready to go, so let's talk machine quilting. I like to joke that the easier it is to piece a quilt, the harder it can be to actually quilt it. That's due to the large background areas that can present themselves in those kind of quilts. But it doesn't have to be difficult. I'm going to give you a few tips to show you how to deal with these larger areas. Tip number one. When dealing with these large areas, I like to recreate the piecing in the background. So in the center, we have this beautiful block, the focal point of the quilt. I'm gonna use the quilting to kind of extend the piecing out a bit. So imagining that this line continues out and then quilting it down like this. It's gonna help build up the block and help separate it from the background filler. And what's nice, I already have these seams right here to use as a guide. So I'm gonna start with my little fake blocks in the background. Now I'm feeling a little adventurous. I'm gonna use the same thread color as the piece that I'm quilting. So I'll use green right here, fill in the block, and then do the same with the blue and the orange. Because I really want that to show off, I'm gonna add a little bit of echoing inside the block. Then I'll travel along the seam and do the same on the other side. I'm gonna add some geometric dot-to-dot -dot quilting within that fake block and fill in the rest of the green fabric. I love echoing the sides of the block just because it helps emphasize the quilt pattern. And just because it's a geometric pointy block doesn't mean I can't throw a few swirls inside of it. I love the contrast between the curvy and the pointy. Now we'll see what the rest of this looks like in just a second, but first I wanna talk about using echoing to make space more manageable. When I talk about echoing, I mean just recreating the sides of the block. I can echo outside or inside the block, and I can add as many or as few echo lines as I want to add. Even better, I can use them in smaller blocks or in bigger areas. In this larger orange triangle, I wanna do some dot-to-dot -dot quilting, but maybe my ruler isn't quite long enough or I don't feel quite comfortable doing that. I'm gonna use some echoing along the longer side to make the center of it easier to manage. It's as simple as quilting a line that echoes the seam until I get to the next edge, use traveling to get to the next one, and repeat. And I can use the spacing that I want to use. I'm using a quarter inch spacing because I can run the edge of my foot along that previously quilted seam, but you can make it a half inch, an inch, really whatever you feel comfortable with. Now that I have an area that's a little bit easier to manage, I'm gonna go ahead and incorporate some dot to dot in that block. So I'm gonna put a diagonal line that goes to one corner, stopping just short, and then going to the opposite point. Of course, this is totally up to you. You can fill it in with a different filler, or shoot, keep adding echo lines, whatever makes you happy. And echoing isn't just for bigger blocks, it's another way to build up your design. So I'm gonna do that same shape inside a couple more times to really build up that geometric motif. Okay, I'm gonna add a few more lines to that and I'm gonna show you what that motif looks like in just a second. But before I get to really quilting on this quilt, I wanna show you the third tip where we're gonna connect lines on our quilt. I love to imagine what would happen if this line connected here and here, and how could that create other shapes to fill in? Instead of dealing with the whole background area at once, I can do it in little chunks, making it easier. So around the center block, I'm gonna go ahead and extend this seam and echo it a couple times. The trick is to use your reference lines on the quilt. This is so great because it's naturally gonna show off the piecing, but it also means less marking for me. And to me, that's a win-win. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. The idea being that this quilt looks better when it's symmetrical. Now don't let all these quilting designs that I'm quilting freak you out. Even if quilting isn't your favorite thing, you can still have fun filling in the areas. Just leave out all the dense quilting, leave out the echoing, and just pick a couple different fillers to use in the different areas of the quilt. You're still gonna get that awesome 
deconstructed look. And as a bonus, it'll be quicker to quilt than what I'm doing. What can I say? I'm a sucker for machine quilting. It's my fave. Obviously, it's going to take just a little bit to quilt this quilt, so I'm going to go ahead and get going on it, and I'll pop in just a little bit to show you what the progress looks like. I'm almost done. Just got to finish this last little bit. Finished! Well, I mean, except for the binding. Ugh. Let me do that real quick, and I'll show you what the whole quilt looks like. This quilt is finished and I am loving how it turned out. Even though this color palette felt a little bit out of my comfort zone, I'm so glad I went for it. I love the colors and the bold, saturated solids. Even though I had a lot of negative space to fill in, using those tips to make it a little bit more manageable not only made it easier, it resulted in quilting that was kind of cool and modern and even had a little bit of a deconstructed look. First, recreating the piecing or extending the blocks into the background area helps build up smaller blocks. I just love how it draws attention to the center of the quilt and really enhances the quilt pattern. But it doesn't just have to be on the outside of the blocks. Recreating the piecing inside larger blocks can make them easier to quilt. And of course, I followed tip number two and used echo lines to make the area more manageable. Echoing both outside and inside the blocks can add interesting detail to the quilt pattern and make those larger areas smaller and easier to manage. Try quilting the echo lines in different arrangements and see what kind of designs you can come up with. And lastly, connect the dots. Connecting points on the quilt can create some amazing secondary designs quickly without marking. Once I made those background areas more manageable, I used a thread color that blended in with the fabric and quilted swirls to add a beautiful texture to the quilt. And even though I didn't know how the quilt would turn out when I started, my fingers were crossed that it would turn out okay, and thankfully it did. It just goes to show that sometimes doing something that feels a little uncomfortable can have some beautiful results. All right, it's your turn. I'd love to know your opinion. Do you like the idea of having a bunch of negative space to play in, or does the thought of that make you feel a little bit nervous? And if you wanna make the Westward quilt with solids or in coordinating prints, all you have to do is click the link in the description box below and you can get the kit or the pattern or the threads, whatever your heart desires. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Midnight Quilter. I'll be back soon with another video. Until then, happy quilting everybody.